Hello and welcome to the Game Theory Podcast over on YouTube. I'm your host Sam Vicini. Over there in Las Vegas is Matt Penny. Periodically before the 2022 NBA Draft, we're going to dive deep into prospects that have chance to be first round picks in the 2022 NBA Draft. Today we're talking Keegan Murray, a six foot eight forward out of Iowa, one of the most productive players in college basketball this season. We're going to talk about his offense, his defense, his overall prospects, and then we're going to make some team fits that might make sense for Keegan. I give the floor to Matt Penny. Tell us everything we need to know about Keegan Murray. By the numbers, and there's a lot of them. He's six foot eight, 225 pounds. He averaged 23.5 points per game this year to go with 8.7 rebounds, 1.9 blocks, 1.3 steals, shot 55.4% from the field, 39.8% from three, 74.7% from the free throw line. He scored 30 or more points five times this year, which included 35 and 8 versus Maryland. He had 37 and 6 versus Nebraska. He had 32 and 9 in the Big Ten tournament versus Indiana, where he went 8 for 10 from three. He also is a synergy darling. 99th percentile of points per possession, 97th percentile in transition scoring. 98th percentile in overall half-court scoring, and 99th percentile in post-up scoring. Yeah, that's all pretty good. And look, he's <laughs> absolutely phenomenal uh, offensively at the college level. Like, he's an incredible open-floor player. Uh, grabs and goes on the break. Like, just absolutely gets out and just attacks the rim. He also plays with good pace. Like he has a real hesitation game to him. He's so poised and strong. Like he can get downhill without lightning speed. Uh, even if he can't get out in transition, like it, he just it gets so low. Like he knows how to leverage his opponent. It feels like at such a high level. Uh, he moves them backward. He plays with just phenomenal bend. Uh he loses, uh, he like maintains his strength. He doesn't lose any bursts. There's just a lot there. Uh, just a high volume, high efficiency player. Uh, his goal is to always get back to his right. Uh, he can either use his left or right crossover to get there, or he's going to get to his spin move to get back to his right hand. Uh, spins back into post-up opportunities. Iowa used him a lot against bigs in mismatches uh in the mid post and then also try to use them in smalls against mismatches on the block uh just has incredible touch i mean was the most efficient post player in college basketball this season 439 players according to synergy had at least 50 possessions in post-ups this season uh murray had the most efficient uh, scoring metrics. He made 63% of his shots there while drawing fouls on 26% of his post attempts, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Right. Mm. Um, just a ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous post player. Uh, and then also finished 60% of his shots at the rim in non post settings. So yeah, Keegan Murray, very effective basketball. around the basket. Yeah. Hey. Uh, but as, as you can talk about, like he also developed his perimeter game as well as a shooter. He did, and, and he did whatever Iowa asked him to be. Play inside, play outside, play slow, play fast. Take the ball off the rim and, and run full court. If he's the first man at the court, he can rim run. He can also run wide and spot for threes. He takes one or two dribbles and does that rake back into a, a jumper from 15 feet, which he liked. He's comfortable driving and pulling up. Uh, that mid post, it does generally end with a, a drive and a spin and a short jumper. He's much better driving and scoring going to his left than he is to his right which is a fun fact, he shoots righty, but he's actually a natural lefty. Everything else he does with his left hand. He has a, what? Just bizarre. Like oh, okay. He, he tries to wrong. get back like, to his right yeah. every single time. Like, it's yeah. wild. So, <laughs> uh, he has that soft touch around the basket, which helps when you're kind of ambidextrous in that way, too. He does post smaller players when it's advantageous, but it's not really like his whole game either. There's so, sort of this weird feeling that he scored all these points by just like running over people. That that wasn't really the tail of the tape. He catches everything in his area. He snatches passes mm. and rebounds and everything you'd want in a, a projectable, skilled NBA four-man down the line. Yeah, and the shot is very projectable as well. He hit 38% of his catch-and-shoot threes. You know, mostly a one-two step, you know, plant the left, step in with the right. Uh, 
but he has a very clean release, very simple mechanics. I liked that Iowa kind of used them a little bit off of flare actions. It felt like Uh, not like an incredible movement shooter by any stretch of the imagination. If you run them like off of high level actions, like you're running them off baseline screens and pin down screens. I think he does struggle to get his feet set a little bit there, but off of like simple flare actions where he can stay square and can just kind of slide and relocate into a shot. I think he's really effective off of movement in that way. Uh, You know, I think he needs to improve a little bit as a passer and playmaker. I don't really think that he sees reads in a super high level manner. Uh, I will say that by the end of the year as well, it seemed like defenders were getting scouted to just sit on the spin move. Mm -hmm. And once they started doing that, look, he was very effective. Like he scored regardless, but like he didn't really react off of that and make passing reads off of that. And I think that that is the place where he needs to make a substantial improvement. He can't just really be a scorer. He needs to be like a well-rounded offensive player. And I agree with that. And this is a guy who also played a supporting role on Iowa with Luke mm-hmm. Garza and then became one of the leading scorers in the country. So he knows all the complexities of each role. So I don't have a, a hang up that he's not going to be able to adjust and adapt to what's asked for him in yep. the NBA level too. What did you think of his defense? Cause that is uh, hmm. less, less good for me. Less good as the, the most productive offensive player in the country. Uh, Fee can be slow. They can. And doesn't help when he overcommits to closeouts, too, and then has to recover back. As much as he loves getting out in transition, what stood out is it can be a negative as he likes to cheat a little bit and jump the passing lane a little bit more or or try to leak out Mm. when a steal is, like, within striking distance. And he'll give his man, like, a lot of space on the perimeter and still bite on shot fakes at times. It's better when he's defending in the post. He, He bodies up. He walls up. He uses strength. He's hard to move. He, he holds his ground on those initial bumps while keeping his verticality. So that allows him to switch up the lineup more than I'd say switch down the lineup and covering more yeah. wings and threes. Yeah. You mentioned the gambling. Uh, he's like just a riverboat gambler out there on defense. <laughs> and part of it is like, I'm sure Iowa said, like, if you can, if you see a lane, jump it because you can get out and transition and be arguably the most effective player in transition offensively in the country. Right. Like I get why they probably coached him that way on some level, but like, man, he, he just tries to make so he tries to hit so many home runs. Hmm. Like he will like try to like, jump entry passes and just like totally give up like wide open angles for uh guys to post them up and like seal them off essentially like uh, he just plays very on the ball as well he plays very square Uh, i'm a little bit worried about what he looks like sliding laterally against quick guards i will say that like i do think he's going to be able to get by because he is very clearly a reactive player. And I think that there is still some room for growth there in the way that he does react to what's happening. Um, But I worry a little bit about the flexibility in general, in terms of like being able to drop his hips, play through his hips, and then uh, be able to recover once a guard beats him. Because look, NBA guards beat the best defenders in the world, Mm -hmm. let alone someone like this. Uh, yes, I, and, and those are all very fair points. I don't think it's so far gone like some of the process we've no. talked about where it's like, ooh, this yeah. is a, a complete negative. It's not good. I think you can get it to a place where it, it's at least contributing and you take away some of those dives out of the play and just stay there and stay solid and play that better post defense and just hedge and recover rather than dive completely out of the play and you have a much better player than uh, we saw at Iowa defensively on the tape this past season. Yeah, Here's the question. So what is what is Keegan Murray to you as an NBA player? Like uh, it, it, the, the name I've brought up most often is Tobias Harris. Like yeah, to me, like that's that the name that makes the most sense. And Tobias Harris has been incredibly effective for the last five years. He's averaged like 19 points, six rebounds, three assists, shot like 47% from the field, 40% from three, and like 88% from the line. So if he turns into Tobias Harris, everybody's fucking laughing to the bank. <laughs> Uh, including Keegan, but yeah. like, you know, is that a guy you take at number five? Probably. You know, probably, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Like if we look back, Tobias Harris is certainly one of the 10 best players in his draft. 
I, I'd be surprised if Keegan Murray is not one of the 10 best players in, in this draft. And as much yeah. as the numbers do explode off the page, like the play doesn't really, when you, when you chop it up and watch it, aside from those games where he has like eight three-pointers in it. Which, by the way, very Tobias Harris-like. Sure. But it, it's more no style of play is too foreign to him. He, he can play yeah. anywhere. And he's also a late bloomer, which I think people are – don't really understand either who, who's just work all the reputation is a worker he's a gym rat yep. his best basketball as scary as it may say and sound may still be ahead of him too like this is this well, is yeah. a guy who in, in high school went to prep school had to go to prep school in florida and then came back to iowa and like didn't have any division one offers and now we're talking about him as a, as a top five pick so the the trajectory is still going upward despite being a little bit older than some of the prospects ahead of him yeah and he grew late as well. Like he, he's really filled out his frame and gotten taller over the course of his last, you know, three or four years of his life. So it's not just, you know, he got better at basketball and has been physically overpowering yeah. college kids. Right. It's that he grew and has gotten bigger and is still learning how to use his frame and all of that stuff. So there is a lot here. Where do you have Keegan on your board? Oh, I have him very high. Uh, I have Keegan right now currently sitting at five. And I wish yeah. I could take him higher. I can't, but there's just that top four to me that it's pretty concrete, pretty cemented in there. In terms of NBA guys, NBA fits, I'd love him with Kate Cunningham in Detroit at five. Yeah. I would I think uh, the the next couple picks are are also interesting fits too. But with Kate and the way that they play, and just another shooter, a floor spacer that can pick a pop and take some pressure off of Kate, that'd be a good setup for him. So yeah, I'm a little bit lower. I have him the five to nine range. Uh, you know, he's a good player and I'm excited to draft him, but uh, I, I don't think I would really consider him at number four over Jaden Ivey. Uh, I probably like, I like the fit at Detroit. I think it makes sense. Uh, his basketball IQ playing off of Cades would probably work on some level. Uh, Indiana, you know, just makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Like they have had a lot of success drafting really intelligent guys who move off the ball, who are scorers uh, like Keegan Murray. I also think he'd be a really good fit with someone like Miles Turner now that they've moved away from the too big a, uh, alignment with Damanis Sabonis and Miles Turner. Uh, Keegan is more of a small, can play farther away from the rim, uh, would allow them to play more of a five-out setting. And I think that his rebounding would also really help make up for some of the deficiencies that Miles has in his game, just in terms of being able to anchor consistently uh, on the glass. But this has been the Game Theory Podcast on YouTube. For Matt Penny over in beautiful Gold Curtain, Las Vegas, I'm Sam Vecini. We'll be back later this week with more.